Nietzsche. That's great. And do we know anything about him? Famous books. Famous books. Yes. Can you name a book, for example, from Nietzsche? Uh-huh. Yeah, perfect. So, and there's something brilliant about Nietzsche because he's a composer, he's a musician, he is a psychologist, and he's also a philosopher. And that is just brilliant. And, and he is prior to uh, Freud, and many believe that what he brought about indeed inspired many, uh, including which, uh, including uh, whom, for example, Nietzsche, I believe, inspired Freud, Jung, and many others. So if you're talking about you know, a big dog. We're talking about a really, really inspirational uh, figure. And there is something uh, brilliant about uh, you know, him that he's very blunt and frank when he's talking. I mean, Nietzsche believes in something and then he expresses it really swiftly and articulately. So that makes uh, Freud extra special. Right? Because he's very articulate and he's very precise in whatever he's talking about. He's not scared how people might judge him. Indeed, he wants others to judge him. And he goes with something like this. Silence is worse. All truths that are kept silent become poisonous. So as you can see, he focuses on, you gotta talk it out. You gotta talk about whatever problem you have. You gotta talk to people, you gotta communicate your message, and you gotta interact with people. Because if you stay silent and remain silent, it's not necessarily a really good thing. So he's got many books, among which there are like two books that are really famous. And there is something called Beyond Good and Evil. And there's also a book, The Birth, uh, the Birth of Tragedy. What was that? But thank you. Uh, very good. So, uh, very cool. So let's go for this. And there is a question. And can you please read the question for me? I'm sorry? Oh, uh, really? I believe you're not trying really hard. But uh, so that's not, oh, how unlucky I am. Yeah, that's no problem. So do you think you can do it? About the following, yes? So we have three things over here. The first one is, everybody? Willpower. Willpower. The second one? Sometimes. And the third? Sometimes. Desires. Do they seem and sound familiar? I believe, yeah, these are random words that we talk about them almost every single day. Desires, self-mastery, and? Willpower. Willpower, yeah? Perfect. So, and can anybody tell me what willpower is? I'm sorry? Oh, is that like the ability or just uh, no, actually committing to something? Mm -hmm. you're, you're like your like convention, like how how conviction. I'm sorry, how well and how hard you want something to happen. Yeah. What else? Uh, do you actually con contrast to de determinism? Oh, determinism. You're saying. Determinism. Uh huh. So you're saying it's against that, against right? Determinism. So I believe you can s somehow guess. The word willpower comprises of two words. The first one is will. The second one is. Power. So it's about the power that you have that you can put into work in order to get things done. Right? That's your willpower. Yeah? There we go. So the second one is? Self-mastery. Self and can you guess what it might mean? Self-mastery? Uh, Self-awareness. Self-awareness in, Self in what sense? Self-actualization. Fantastic, yeah, that's a good game. You know, I, I threw a word, you threw a word, yeah. Self-actualization? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, very cool. Uh, but honestly, self-mastery can mean self uh, to be determined, and it can also uh, mean uh, being determined and also being able to realize your potential. But self-mastery is something that we are going to talk about. And I'm so excited because what I'm talking about is something that I really enjoy talking about, yeah? And you try really hard to enjoy what I'm talking about. Yeah, very good. And desires. And desires are what we want. want. Yeah? Like food, maybe, I don't know. I want uh, money. I want people. I want the how this house. I want a villa, right? Yes? These are my desires. desires. Great. And do you think they're good things or bad things? Good. Could be both. How, can, how could be both? Of mm -hmm. course, they, they can help us achieve a certain milestone. But if it's uh, if we are too obsessive about getting stuff and Ooh. forget about our present moment, maybe that becomes. This can poisonous. also be yeah poisonous. Yeah, 
or deleterious, right? Very good. So let's talk about it. Later, I will ask you to talk about it all. But first, let me tell you what I mean. Great. So first, let's go for this one. I love Nietzsche because it's like your brother, your sister, your older sister, or your brother talking to you. I believe it's like this. It's like a 7 a.m. conversation after a great party. The conversation is something that you can relate to, but it's not a conversation that you may have on a day-to-day -day basis. As I told you, it is something extra special. So let's go for this. I love this. Mastering yourself is the foundation of whatever you can achieve in life. And that's a fun thing. Like, what, what does it even mean to master yourself? But apparently, if you have desires, right? You are hungry. What do you do? You get some food. Yes? Fantastic. And you're thirsty. The same thing. You go and drink water. You want to get married. You get married. I mean, that's how it works, right? But for example, you may want to lose weight, and you should stop eating too excessively. So yeah, so, but you have to resist the urge for food. And the question is, can you do that? Yes, if you can raise your hand, raise your hand. Like two people, three people. So, so do you have the power to need something so much, yet resist? So no, no, I don't want to do it. Because I am on a diet. I'm not going to eat that really delicious cake. Do you have the power? OK. Some of you go like this. Maybe. Yeah. All right. But apparently, apparently, if you fail to master yourself, your needs, desires, if you cannot do that, others who can do that will command you. Isn't it brilliant or what? Let me tell you what. Imagine you're, a, you're an employee. Let's, let me uh, give you an example that we can all relate to. So imagine you're an employee. You have a number of responsibilities, right? You, got, you have tasks. You got to do this. You got to do this. You got to do that. Is that so? Yes, yes? Very good. So if you manage to do it all precisely and like with a lot of attention and diligently, your boss is highly unlikely to come over and fault with you. Yes? Don't do it like this. You got to do this. You got to do this. You haven't done this all. Right? But if you do it all, no one can tell you anything. Yes, yes? Very good. So Nietzsche says, you got to be able to master the following. Of course, he says, you got to master this and this and this and this and that. But I was too lazy to uh, talk about it all. So I, ch I chose these four randomly. OK? First, Nietzsche says, you have to master your desires. You want to lose weight right now, but they sell great cake, uh, and you got to go and buy some. If you cannot do that, I promise you, you, you will never lose weight. I want to be knowledgeable. I want to be resourceful. I want to work really hard and accumulate this amount of money. If you cannot manage how much money you're spending, I promise you, you will never will. Right? So you have to master your desires. And there is a fun thing. Some people say, I want to be charismatic. Yes, yes? I want to be charismatic. I want to be respectable. I believe if you can master your desires, not to eat what you eat, not to say what, what you shouldn't say, I believe people start respecting you because you have your principles and you adhere to your principles. And that is a brilliant thing. So the second thing that you got to master is your mind. If you cannot control your mind, at least if you don't try to control your mind, uh, you're in deep trouble because you cannot manage what you're thinking. And uh, in a second, you're worried sick, and you don't know what's going on. And after two hours, you're doing awesome, and everything's uh, great and brilliant. So apparently, you got to also master your mind. The next thing is your temper. Yeah, It is just awesome. I love this one. I love this one. I can't stress that enough. And now, let me tell you why. OK, so you're paying a lot of attention. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> I thought you were in pain, because you were like this. Yeah, let me tell you something about the temper. Imagine you are this time an employer, and I am an employee of yours. I'm working for you. And unfortunately, I'm not doing my best. I do not know what the reason, as, a, as an employee, employer, you do not know what the reason is, but I'm not doing my job properly. So what do you do? Talk you. you talk to me. How do you talk to me? Yeah. But you're going to be really gentle, right? Gentle. Yeah, what if that person didn't take you seriously? <clears throat> But the second time, still gentle, yeah, no. not kissing, but <laughs> but you're going to say. My son. Some, uh, oh, you're going to threaten. Yeah, yeah, 
You don't warn him, not yeah. to threaten him, yeah, but to warn him, yeah. Like this time, next time. Awesome. Fantastic. That's a brilliant thing because if you lose your temper because I'm not doing, uh, doing my job properly or promptly, uh, you're going to shab, you're going to lose your temper and our relationship is over, right? The same thing about family members, right? For example, uh, your husband, your best friend, your close friend, unfortunately, couldn't do what they had promised you they would do and they didn't do it because of some reason and then you lose your temper. Yeah, blah, blah, yeah. You, you always do this, right? Yes. The relationship is over. Something as little as, I don't know, I was late for two minutes can happen and you lose your temper. And you show me that you are never to trust. I can never trust you. And last but not least is your heart. So I'll explain that later, not now. Let's go for the next part. So this is also a great thing. Again, a quote from Nietzsche. He that cannot obey himself shall be isn't it brilliant yes. if you cannot master yourself others who can will command you yeah because when you have no self-discipline yeah when you are not taking care of yourself your career whatever that is others who can will command you so I, I find this notion brilliant like how important that is that I can control myself to say what I need to say and not to say what I shouldn't. The same thing can be said about almost everything. So there are four things. And you may say, okay, Fatty, you're talking about it a little too seriously. I want to enjoy life. I want to be happy. Yeah, you might say. In my classes, no one should be happy. Yeah, but uh, you may say, I want to be happy. I want to just enjoy life. I want to eat, drink, party, go out because life is too short. And I'll say, that's no problem. I'll still love you. That is no problem. That is your choice. That's your life. Good luck with that. But get ready for the consequences. Because every decision you make has its own consequences. Yeah. And if you can bear the consequences, that's no problem. Go and have fun. But what are the consequences? At least, uh, at least you need to know what they are, right? I believe you have this right to know what the consequences are when you cannot master yourself, when you cannot uh, control yourself, when you cannot resist eating that delicious cake. Let's see what the consequences are. Apparently, these are the consequences. First, you start... Yeah, you, know, you doubt yourself because you're not as competent as you should be. You're not as great as you should be. Others are better than you are. They work harder, they make more money, and they tell you what to do, what not to do. So you start doubting yourself. Maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I'm someone worthless. Like, look at my sister. She's better, she's hard, more hardworking, and she's more successful. Maybe that's because uh, no one loves me, right? You start doubting yourself. And when you doubt yourself, my friend, you know what, what will happen next. So then, you also, you will become command it. People will tell you what to do, what not to do. And it happens very easily because you show that you are incompetent. You cannot take care of yourself, so I should take care of you. <laughs> yeah? Great. So uh, you're going to be commanded. And the next one is you start pleasing others. You want to just people to love you. Yeah? You just want, you want others to love me. Yeah, yeah, I just bought you a cake. You see, people are sometimes too polite. Yeah, sometimes you think, oh my God, are you pulling my leg? They're just too polite. I'm trying to please others. And last is you live a shadow, shadow life. People, never tell, uh, people can never tell who you are unless you're angry because you're sick and tired of your life. Your job is dumb. The society does not respect you. People, oh my God, have you got any friends? I've got a few fair, fair weather friends. So because you're just living a shadow life. You will never realize your potential. You will never be who you really want to be. Yeah? But let's go for the next one. But you can also choose to be self-disciplined and then the consequences will be something that right now I'm going to give you five minutes to talk about. So we spoke about what if you don't? What if you do? Hmm? What if you do? What if you do? What if you control yourself? What if you have that willpower? What if you cultivate your self-discipline? What if you are...